<sighs> All right, here we go. Last video. Um, if you stuck with me through now, then you've been watching for almost 45 minutes, uh, which is quite a long time, and you should probably go outside or something. Um, if not, which I hope you guys haven't, I hope you guys have taken the time to go through and play this through on piano. Uh, at this point, this video is for you if you have mastered everything up until this point. Um, you can play it together very prettily, with control, fingering, you're comfortable with it, you're comfortable making it sound very pretty. You don't need to do this advanced technique. Um, this advanced stuff kind of helps it sound more like an orchestra, more like the chorus of birds of Mockingjays that would be singing the song. Um, and I'm basically just following the special instructions that I listed in the more info of the original song, which is to say that you form octaves out of your right hand, and an octave basically, so instead of playing one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, you're playing large gaps like this, and it's very hard to make these jumps sound connected. So it, take, it took me years to learn how to do it. So if you don't get it right away, don't fret. Keep practicing. Um, private message to me if you want some tips, so I'll see what I can do. But the idea is that we're gonna octave out the right hand um, by adding the bottom octave, which means eight notes below the top note, you're gonna play all the time, each time, for every note. Um, if there's two notes written, you take eight notes below the top note. So if you have a E flat and a G, you're gonna do G, E flat, G. Um, I think that's about all I did. Uh, it's just when I stopped the octave too. Uh, the second thing I technically did to modify it is add in the first whistle before the entire song started, but we've been doing that from now on. So we'll kind of go through this and I think I'll compare the two for you. See, see if I can show you the differences. It'll be kind of hard, so try to stick with me. All right. Should be able to see enough from there. You know what, I'm gonna double check and make sure that my audio system's recording too, because I would be terribly sad. It is. Okay. If it wasn't, I was gonna be terribly sad if I went through and played this entire thing. How do we do it? All right. When we start, you know, heck, I'm just gonna play it through the way I play it and stop after a little bit. Give you an idea of what it should be. It's a little bit harder, doesn't it? Um, it can be hard. The part that's the trickiest actually is kind of your right hand and left hand, since your left hand was playing down here and your right hand was playing up here. Adding that bottom octave, they start getting each other's way a lot. And you just have to be comfortable playing up high over the left hand, or below it, crossing over, crossing under as much as you need to. Uh, the way I play it may not be the exact same way you play it. Feel free to just modify whatever suits your needs. Oh, oh, and I'm sorry, this doesn't sound as good as the original Ruse Whistle. Uh, I've been pretty sick for about a month or so, so I haven't had much time to practice. I've gotten a little rusty. So when we're doing this, um, like I said, you play it through one time. And now, from here on out, it's octaves. So normally you'd do this again. Instead, you're doing Octave, 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 octave. That can be very hard to connect. Uh, some of these you can get away with because the left hand is carrying a lot of the sound with it. But this first is very hard to do. Uh, an octave and remain smooth. Remain as smooth as. And something that very much helps me, I don't know if you can tell, is I roll my wrist 
and hand in the direction that I'm going to be going. And actually, my forearm is guiding in that same direction too. So my wrist is pointed this way, my forearm, wrist, action together. Um, that's one of the keys to getting these octaves to sound smooth, actually. So we'll go through it again. carrying the melody you can kind of do without left hand every now and then, especially since you're filling out the melody now with that second octave. You're going to get it right, of course, but if you don't, no harm, no foul. So we'll play that again, that whole first page again. Another nine minutes in. Yeah, I'll play that whole first page again.
Measure 32, or the end of Measure 31. Um, again, it's pretty much the exact same as that part in the first page, as the same part in the first page. So do the best you can. If you got it right the first time, you should be able to get it right the second time. Mm. Again, tricky crossing overs, but keep practicing at them. If you have to break it up and just do a measure five times over, do it. All right, moving on, starting at measure 32. So that's the entire piece. Uh, we've got about two and a half minutes or so left. So let's work on breathing a little bit. Uh, phrasing, I don't want to get too much into because I'd like to let you guys kind of make your own interpretations of this song. Uh, but it's important to not play every note the same volume, the same speed. That's kind of the basis of the idea of phrasing. You want to separate into, separate into phrases. If I was to read poetry, Jack went down the hill. Jill went, rolled up the hill. I don't know. Jack went down the hill. Jill, however, rolled up the hill. Not all the words are the same speed. Not all the words are the same volume. It helps form it into these nice, compact sentences that we can realize, that we can recognize. Uh, our brains work the same way for music. You want to turn words into sentences, essentially. That's what phrasing is doing. The words are your notes, the sentences are your phrases. So I could play... And it sounds pretty, it's Rue's whistle. Or, I could change the volume and the speed just a little bit of each note. Maybe I didn't like that one, maybe I could try it a different way. Maybe I can try to make the first note loud. All of those are possibilities. Uh, they're completely up to you. Uh, I think the only possibility I'd say don't do is make them all the same volume. Uh, how much time do we have left? About a minute. Uh, I think this one's going to end a little bit short. Because that's about all I have to tell you. Uh, if you guys have specific questions about phrasing, technique, uh, when to make what what volume in the song overall, things like that, feel free to send me a message, ask for another tutorial, I could do that. Uh, I'm a little bit hesitant, like I said, I want you guys to kind of invent your own ways to play this song. Uh, but at the same time, I don't mind sharing the way I do it. So, that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed these nearly hour long, hour worth of tutorial. Uh, hopefully, you guys stuck with me. I'll see you later. <laughs>